Does that leave us between a rock and a hard place? All of these superbugs, we're hoping to leverage their superpowers in case there's a nuclear apocalypse coming our way. We can survive because they can survive. We can use them to make the environment a little less radioactive. Will they kill us all before we even get to that point? This is where AI comes in potentially. Deciding from BBC News, new superbug killing antibody discovered using AI. And this is the dream. The bottleneck of us being very slow in discovering new antibiotics. Maybe artificial intelligence can come along and help us figure out these are the drugs we are looking for. How the AI helped in this case was narrowing down thousands of potential chemicals to a handful of chemicals that are most likely to be usable as antibiotics. They found an experimental antibiotic called obosin, which will need further tests before being used. That is the recurring theme. It will need further tests before being used is almost the tagline of this podcast. Drug discovery is a game of numbers. Ideally, you have thousands and thousands of potential targets that you extract from libraries of drugs. There are thousands of compounds, but we don't have the resources to test all of them to the level of depth that we need to check if it's really safe. And the AI was trained on chemical features of drugs that could attack problematic bacterium, then used on a library of over 6,680 compounds whose effectiveness was unknown. And AI took an hour and a half to whittle that list down to produce a short list of about 240. And then when they tested 240 in the lab, they found nine potential antibiotics. And one of those nine was the incredibly potent antibiotic abosin. So you can really see it's a numbers game, isn't it? From 6,680 targets down to one very potent antibiotic. This still counts as a tremendous success, even though the success rate is one in 6,680. Right? All you need is one. This is when the work starts. Despite how quickly AI whittled down that list of antibiotics down to 240, then down to nine, then down to one, they expect the first AI antibiotic could take until 2030 until all the testing is finished and there are available to be prescribed. A huge lag from initial discovery to clinical use. Hence, we need a constant pipeline of antibiotics being discovered again and again. But nevertheless, AI has been very useful in this part of the process and that has some promising future leads. The most famous application of AI within the biological sciences is AlphaFold. You've probably heard of AlphaFold. Next generation of AlphaFold was basically announced in 31st of October. And what it's able to do is go through and look at different proteins, antibiotics, it could be vaccine targets, it could be certain compounds found in a body that are the targets for antibiotics, the targets for drugs and vaccines. And how they fold is actually a really difficult thing to figure out because protein structure fundamentally is made up of individual amino acids chained up, but that linear chain is not a functional representation of proteins. That then needs a 3D or four dimensional fold that is contingent on all these different chemicals and environmental conditions. And that folding process of figuring out how it folds is really difficult. You can make predictions certainly, and that was one of the bottlenecks. We didn't know which of the folds is most likely to be the, the accurate one. Alpha fold and this version of AI can go through and speed up the predictions of all of these different folding patterns and give the most likely version of the folding pattern for the scientists can then take and make further predictions and do further testing. Because again, even though this is amazingly powerful technology and alpha fold has rightly deserved a lot of the recognition and press it's received, it is not a panacea. It is not a silver bullet. All of the folding patterns that it predicts will not generate drugs overnight. They will generate the most likely versions of drugs that may work, but unless we can speed up that clinical testing route, which you actually don't want to speed up that quickly, you want it to be tested very, very thoroughly for safety in humans, it will not actually lead to any drugs that will impact our everyday lives by itself. So without the work of the researchers, the human scientists actually translating the finding, translating these predictions from the AI into an animal model, into a human tested clinic, into all of these phase one, phase two, phase three clinical trials for safety, it is not actually gonna make a difference in terms of the drugs you can buy over the counter to treat the next superbug, which may or may not save us from the nuclear apocalypse. If you're interested in the laboratory techniques scientists use to investigate superbugs, you can find that video linked up here or in the show notes below. Hope to connect with you again in the next episode.